Hello horror hounds. There comes a time in every A to Z when you need a P and for me that time is now so I'm going to run the opening credits and when we get back we'll be talking about Peeping Tom. At this point in proceedings I'll let you know that down in the description field below I will link to Jambo Shango and Randy Moles entry for P, since their A to Z of horror inspired this one. Theirs is Pumpkinhead, a fantastically entertaining film, and theirs is a fantastically entertaining review of it. For here and for now, with us, our entry for P was a film released in 1960 that was deemed so shocking that at the time it effectively destroyed the career of its director. And that director was no slouch either. It was Michael Powell. Powell of Powell and Pressburger, a man on whose CV has entries such as The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, The Red Shoes, Black Narcissus, and The Peerless, A Matter of Life and Death. Yet a film about a serial killer that asks us to sympathise with him, as well as making us, as the audience, complicit in his murderous gaze, was for the time a step too far. P is for Peeping Tom. And what a cracker of a film this is. Peeping Tom is a film about a man who films his victims as they die. And that's no spoiler here. The film practically opens with his camera eye view uh, approaching and then dispatching his next victim. After which we jump straight to the next scene where we're sitting over his shoulder as he watches the same footage over again in his attic apartment on a big screen that he's got set up there. Found footage horror movies owe a debt to Michael Powell. Slasher movies owe a debt to Michael Powell. Hell, Alfred Hitchcock owes a debt to Michael Powell, not least for taking all the fire and fury a few months before he unleashed Psycho on an unsuspecting audience. Now don't get me wrong, critics sneered at Psycho. Some thought Hitchcock was demeaning himself with such grubby, exploitative material. But where Michael Powell was ultimately, and very swiftly crucified, Hitchcock was eventually deified. This is a film all about looking. The main character, Mark Lewis, is for all practical purposes, never without his camera. Like Blade Runner, the very first shot of the movie is an extreme close-up of a blue eye staring straight back at us before we move instantly into that camera eye view footage that I mentioned a few seconds ago. Its central character, Mark Lewis, is a focus puller at a British movie studio, but his real passion is the documentary he is making. His camera is his eye on the world. He almost can't view the world except through the viewfinder on the thing. He carries it like a baby, he kisses it like a lover. The mystery of this film is not who the killer is, but it's the revelation of the true nature of the documentary he's making. The theme of looking and seeing as understanding is shot intentionally all the way through the movie and counterpointed uh, with a character, Helen's mother, Helen lives, the girl who lives downstairs, who becomes interested in Mark, Mark becomes interested in her, a sort of proto-final girl, I guess. But Helen's mother is blind, and her blindness, in contrast to Mark's triclops camera with its, with its three different sized lenses, this bizarre three-eyed monster, it's the blind woman who ironically can see Mark the clearest, understand his danger. There's a fa fascinating scene where she's in his attic room with him asking about the footage he's continually looking at and what's on the screen in front of her. And of course, it's the footage of his killings. Mark is played by Carl Boehm and Boehm, along with you know, the script and Powell's direction, gives us a killer to sympathise with. Boehm's performance creates a vicious killer who is shy and wounded. The film hates him, yet sympathises with him. He's a very lonely man. This isn't going to be a foreign conceit to us horror lovers, but in 1960, this was a bold new perspective. A step too far for critics and audiences alike. 
true, psycho, and you can't really talk about Peeping Tom without talking about Psycho. Psycho has us sympathise with Norman Bates, but only puts us on the hook, so to speak, culpable retrospectively when he's revealed as the killer. From its opening frames, Peeping Tom puts us in the company of a twisted, vulnerable, comically pathetic, weirdly lovable, yet deadly man who kills women. Peeping Tom never lets us off the hook. Psycho plays a bait and switch, so at the very end, we knew that we were wriggling. With Peeping Tom, we're side by side, eye to eye, with Mark Lewis, from the very opening shots. And if an awful lot of this sounds quite familiar, you won't be alone. Coming back to rewatch Peeping Tom, I was reminded intensely of Thomas Harris's novel Red Dragon, but specifically Michael Mann's Manhunter, the film of that book. A film I'm gonna to have to get around to talking about at some point. There are so many parallels. The blind character who is in the room with the killer whilst he's watching the footage of his victims. Uh, the killer, well, let's just take a quote from Manhunter when Will Graham says of the tooth fairy Francis Stolheide, Everything with you is seeing, isn't it? Your primary sensory intake that makes your dream live is seeing. Reflections, mirrors, images. The same could be said of Mark Lewis in Peeping Tom. These are both films that students of film studies will have an absolute ball dissecting. The dangerous gaze as it exists in Peeping Tom and Manhunter. It's not a scary horror film, but it's the kind of film that takes you into a strange headspace, introduces you to uncomfortable impulses and notions, and then asks you to understand them. And this isn't just done in the way Bone's performance asks us to sympathise, if not empathise, with Lewis. The way the film is put together, Powell is asking the audience directly as we see what he sees, as we are the camera eye. You may be horrified by what you see, the murders, the shock, the, the fear on these women's faces, but to what extent are you complicit? You've agreed to sit and watch a film about a murderer. There must be part of you, therefore, that wants to see these things. Is there any part of you that secretly enjoys the violence? being served up for your entertainment? And if so, who exactly is the voyeur here? Is it Mark looking at these women through the lens of his camera and then again on the footage he's captured? Or is it us one step removed in the dark watching exactly the same thing? It's an uncomfortable position to put the audience in. And I don't necessarily think that Powell is condemning us for wanting to see these things. What he is doing is perhaps peeling back some of the armour and asking us to ask some uncomfortable truths about the voyeuristic properties of a cinema audience. Weirdly, Bowen's performance calls to mind, in my mind, a kind of Nosferatu figure. Deadly, a vicious killer, but at the same time lonely and quite tragic. Paying forwards, uh, Peeping Tom is a foundation stone in so many other films that it's, it's gratifying that it's a film that is now getting its due. It's unfortunate that it had to destroy the career of the man who made it first and sort of become persona non grata for so many years. But uh, it reminds me of... Uh, Strange Days, the amazing sci-fi film where you can record the experiences of other people and play them back. I've clearly Scream 4 is informed by Peeping Tom. There's a murder in Halloween Resurrection where the me Michael's method of dispatch is a clear hearkening back to Peeping Tom. Um, the original Halloween, uh, the, uh, the opening point of view tracking shot from that Peeping Tom reminds me of. Clive Barker's short story, Fear. Peeping Tom makes me think of that. This is such a vitally, if you're at all interested in the history of horror, such 
a vital keystone to the history of horror if you have an intellectual pursuit for horror I recommend Peeping Tom above most other things will it be scary no if you like serial killer films if you like Manhunter uh, you have to check out Peeping Tom so that's my recommendation for Pete we'll move swiftly on to Q where we'll ask you to just shh, keep it down but no not that one not the recent one with the aliens Q for us is for